Hey guys, it's Chris from CNC Labs. So today I want to be making a video that talks specifically about the 3D printed parts on the long mill. So um, today I've got some parts with me that I'm going to show off to you guys. And I'm going to be also grabbing a print right off of uh, a 3D printer to take with us as well. We're going to be doing some destructive testing. And this is to demonstrate the strength that we go to uh, when we 3D print parts. And uh, I'll talk more about it when we get into the other room, so come along with me. Welcome, by the way, to see some of the new section of the office that's opened up. This is our new experimenting slash prototyping area in the back here. Actually, I'll take you over to the machine first. So, on a long mill, we've got a couple 3D printed parts. Um, most of them are non-structural, like parts that support the drag chain, or they're used for alignment, like aligning the aluminum rail into the steel gantry. Um, but there is some more structural parts, like this bracket here, that kind of aligns the components for the z-axis, and we have the plastic feet as well. So sometimes we get questions about the 3D printed parts here, um, you know, how strong are they? Can I be confident that they will work uh, long term? And so, first of all, we don't just slap 3D printed parts on there and hope for the best. We do design the machines to accommodate the parts being 3D printed. Uh, this rail, for example, could just be supported at either end, but instead it uses four feet uh, to fully support the rail along its length. Um, same for the other side, obviously. And we make the parts quite bulky as well. I'll take you over here. So, um, you can see these two printed parts look basically the exact same. They're nice prints. If you got them off your printer at home, you'd think to yourself that you'd made a good part, right? Um, you're mostly looking for surface finish and dimensional accuracy. We print these out of PLA+, Plus, by the way. But I've actually labeled these, uh, one as being good and one as being bad. And the bad one is essentially, as soon as we designed the part, we used stock settings and printed it. And this is the part that came out. The good part is after about two weeks of honing in very specific settings, uh, like extrusion widths, uh, temperatures, printing speeds, uh, in order to make a part that's as strong as it can be. So I'm first going to demonstrate to you the difference, even though these look the exact same, and this could be on your printer or on your machine just as much as this could, if you're getting it from another manufacturer, we spend the time to make sure these parts are solid. So I'll grab these pliers at the back. So this is the bad part here, and I'm just going to break off this ring uh, uh, maybe like a half inch down. So look at this, when it breaks, it's right along the layer line, like this is showing the downsides of a poor 3D printed part, um, which is that you get the anisotropy of the material, uh, which means that essentially the weakness of the material comes from a poor adhesion of the layers, and it just snaps right across the layer. Uh, this is what makes people afraid of having 3D printed parts on their machines because they're worried that it's just going to snap along the layer and it's, it, it's much weaker along the layer line than it is in the other two directions. So now I'm going to show you the part that we do once we do all of the tuning. So I'm going to try to break it around the same depth. So you can see that took a bit more effort and you can also see that it's now, uh, rather than break, breaking along the same line, it's shearing across multiple lines. I don't know if you can see that there, but that's a better demonstration of how um, the material behaves more uh, isotropically. You can see when I break this again, 
it's breaking along multiple lines like this rather than across the same line. And I'll break another ring off the bad one to show you once again. That just snaps across one line. So it's important to do these tunings because even, especially on a thin part like this, this is where a hose fits over the taper. Um, there's such little cross-sectional area for the plastic part. You want to ensure that this is going to last for a longer period of time. And so the layer strength is a must. Um, obviously, this is the most breakable part of the, of the piece, but we design the pieces to generally have a large cross-sectional area where we can. I'll try to give you a demonstration of, this is still the good print here, this is the honed print. I'll try to clamp on to the arm here and see how much force it takes to actually break this arm off. So I gave that quite a solid whack there. And you can see another demonstration here of how the part breaks along multiple layers. Let's see if I can get another break further down. I'm not holding back on this, so. Yeah, so it's breaking along multiple layers. Whereas if I were to go back and break the stock part, should just be able to give this a much lighter tap and of course it's mostly sheared along the same layer there. So the last piece that I'm going to break is one of the feet brackets here uh, just to show you a similar demonstration. Um, this one doesn't have the most easy way of breakage but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it on this lip here because when I break it uh, if it's a poor part, it should go the path of least resistance and shear just right across this line here. And uh, if it is printed well, it should certainly not do that. So let me think how I want to... might clamp it like that. So let's see. So that's shearing more along multiple layers there. Let's see if I can maybe break it along this line here. This will be a bit tougher to break. I'm just going to go for a, a crosswise break here. Even though it's not going to demonstrate the lines, I think it should do a good demonstration of the strength of the part. So I'll just slowly hit it harder and harder until it breaks. There we go. Obviously, as you can see, uh, this is broken way across the layers. I mean, that's how I was applying the force, but you can see um, how it behaves much more isotropically. I've got a very similar uh, break from earlier here, and you can see that when I was holding onto this edge piece and I go to break it off, it just completely shears um, in the, like against the, the layers. The layers are in this direction. You'd think the piece would just snap off like this, and instead it shears way across all the layers. So anyway, I kind of just want to finish off by saying that um, when we're making these parts, these are parts that we're tuning the settings for. Um, we regularly grab parts right off the printer farm and do brake tests to make sure that nothing's changed. You can have small variations just even in the office environment that might cause the parts to be weaker than you expect them to be. So we kind of continually do these tests to make sure that the parts are very strong over a long period of time. We sometimes get asked questions about why we use PLA. 
uh, specifically PLA+. Um, and the reason for that is because uh, some plastics, though they might be more resistant to breakage, they might also have uh, higher creep, uh, i.e. if they're uh, put under stress for a long period of time or they're held at an elevated temperature, they will slowly deform. This is still, the, like PLA, that's still the case. It can still experience creep, um, but it's a much more brittle plastic than others are. And um, it also um, is, allows us to print parts which are more dimensionally accurate because some other materials experience uh, shrinkage based off of like how they're being printed. And so sometimes that re uh, results in unreliable geometry. In any case, uh, these are the parts that are continuing to be on the long mill into the future. Uh, if you have any more questions about how I've done this testing or how we do our printing, um, I do have a video that I put out a bit like a couple weeks back showing an office tour, not of the current setup, but of the previous setup, where Andy and I talk about some of the settings we use and the printers that we use for making these parts. Um, I think that's everything that I can think of, so uh, I'll see you guys later.